Okay, so today we thought we would go over some of our flight tunnels for our high-speed flash photography that we do. Um, we got a question about them, and so we thought um, it's much easier to show you in video because it's not an easy answer. <laughs> yeah, I over the years I've made many, many different kinds of flight tunnels, depending on the subjects that we're after. And so today I just thought we'd run through some of the different ones uh, that I've used from photographing anything from tiny little forward flies to bats uh, and everything in between. Yeah, so we will all link our uh, high-speed flash video above, and if this is a video that you're interested in, you can like and subscribe and you'll be notified when we make more videos like this. All of these are designed to be used for still photography, high-speed flash photography in particular, where you have a subject in a controlled um, environment uh, and using you know high-speed flash, flashes dialed uh, way down in terms of their power in order to capture them. So this first one is a um, Michael Durham-inspired one uh, from many years ago. Um, he's a photography mentor of ours. Uh, this is a uh, collapsible dog crate um, that I have tilted on its side. <clears throat> the reason for that is um, that one side is designed to, to basically open up, I guess, for the dog to go in and out. Uh, but what's nice is it also allows you to put your subject in. And this big one we really only use for bats. Uh, it's pretty big for any insects. I wish we had insects that would be this big, but uh, <laughs> that this is what we've used for bats. So the idea is you can introduce the bat from above through this, um, this opening into the flight tunnel. And I've got two different windows that uh, I've put on each side. These are for flashes, so you can angle uh, your flashes in there uh, uh, towards kind of uh, the exit a bit. And then the exit itself is windowless. Um, in this particular version, we use this in a large tent that's completely enclosed, and the idea is the bat comes flying out of here. Your lasers are set up in front of this, uh, and so you can have flashes from behind, you can have uh, flashes in front, uh, and the bat will literally just exit the flight tunnel into the tent, and then of course has to be recaptured. So one um, thing you'll see uh, repeated here, one element in a couple of these is the exit. Um, with this one, um, again, because they, the bat can actually fly right out of uh, this flight tunnel, um, I have, I'm using foam core to reduce the exit, but I've got a series of smaller um, pieces of foam core so I can you know, basically have choices as to the size of, of uh, critter. Foam, foam core, or which relates to the size, of, the size of the exit, which relates to the size of the critter. Flying exactly, out, yeah. Flying out. So, and if you don't know what foam core is, it's basically poster board, or you can get it at the Dollar Tree, you can get it at, like, any craft store, Walmart sells it. Um, yeah, you can usually find white at those places, black might be a little bit tougher, but uh, craft stores uh, certainly uh, have it. And that's not the first, this isn't the first time you're going to see foam core in our lives, and so, uh, so have an entire flight tunnel made out of it. Yeah. <laughs> um... And then the PVC is nothing more than it's just easier to have it raised off the ground a little bit when you're working in a tent and, and working with these things. And so it's just a platform to kind of raise it up a little bit and place to stick stuff underneath so that you're not tripping over things. And, and to get the flashes out, because like, they're usually in tripods, so to get it level with the flash. Exactly, yeah. So um, that's, that's the largest uh, version. A very comparable one um, is made out of just one of these collapsible um, light sheds or, or white boxes. 
And um, this is the same white box that we use for like our seamless white background. So I I'll put a video in there. I'll, put, I'll link a video of that so you can see. And then that video has all sorts of links to these online on Amazon and whatnot. Right. They make these in tons of different sizes. Um, this is, um, you know, on the larger side of them, but they make them in different sizes. Same idea though, uh, I've cut windows um, on both sides so that I can introduce uh, light. Um, there's a zipper on the, what would be um, the side, uh, the way this is really designed, but I've got it flipped so this is the top so that you can introduce things. This can be used for bats, can be used for larger insects, moths, things like that. Um, this one you could do the same way uh, where you just have a, a re reducer in terms of the exit and then they fly out or I'm just using a piece of glass actually just the lid of a Cornell drawer this is a clever way to do it that um, uh, Peter Niskrecki uh, uh, I think uh, came up with yeah I think people probably can't see but there is a piece of glass there yeah yeah so so this is with the glass here let me designed... zoom in you, there's actually a little bug now you can see if there's a bug on the glass because <laughs> we're outdoors so this is designed with the glass so that you would be photographing the subject inside. Um, uh, you know, but again, you could take it off and use it in a similar way here. With this kind of setup, you can actually put the lasers on tripods on the inside uh, if you have the glass um, and, and again, pre-focus uh, on that. So this one I have made various versions of over the years. Um, Depending on what we're trying to do, uh, you know, I've made it in, in, with white foam core, with black foam core, and, and different arrangements. But it's designed as um, you would have seen earlier to be completely collapsed down, so for, for portability, made completely out of foam core except for the the pane of glass in the back. Um, so it's two different, basically cubes that that are nested in one another. So it's sheet of glass like this at a forty-five degree angle. It um, is in the back. So this one is designed to have a background back here uh, or to be able to shoot straight through and, and use whatever background is natural back here. Uh, I've made a little opening uh, to introduce the insect uh, right here. Um, and then I've got um, a port for a flash going directly down, two slits on the side for the laser. Uh, and just like with the, uh, the bat, one with the collapsible dog tunnel, I have different sizes of um, exits that I can put on here depending upon the size critter that I'm going to be working with. Um, I um, have used this for larger moths like silk moths, um, grasshoppers, um, large uh, dobson flies, anything that's um, you know quite large. Um, uh, Insect-wise, this uh, I have found to work well for. Then um, I have a series of now getting quite small um, ones that I've made. These boxes are made out of acrylic except for the front and back panels, which are uh, borosilicate glass. Um, a few consistencies. These are basically the exact same box, just one's a little bit larger than the other. They are mounted on um, an aluminum uh, base. And the reason for that is I like to secure these when I can to a breadboard. So this is a breadboard that can split into two and, and be quite portable. I can then put this on, on uh, I can either bolt it directly down or I can raise it up as need be and secure it along with the lasers, flashes and other things uh, to the breadboard um, in the field. And, and I find that quite useful. And that size is probably our most used size right yes. there. Uh, absolutely. But, so if you're um, wanting one, that's the size to aim for. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things about this box. Um, it's got a hinged lid um, so that you can access it and clean things out. When you open it up, then the front uh, piece of glass slides in and grooves so it can be replaced. You will have to replace it as it gets scratched. You'll need to take it out to clean it. And then you got a piece that's sliding in at a 45 degree angle in the back. I oftentimes will put a piece of foam core, um, depending on what I'm doing, white or black, but with some silver tape uh, to reflect light up from uh, the bottom. 
Um, I could, in with these aluminum ones, just take it completely out, but I find that insects don't walk very well on that aluminum, and they, you know, I think they're not as comfortable. This gives them a little bit of traction, actually, uh, the, the, the foam core. And then a couple of other features that you will notice in these is um, I uh, have built in ports, so a port on the top to introduce the insect, or a port on the side. So these ports are specifically designed uh, to work well with a 50 millimeter tube. So I like to use these falcon tubes for collecting insects. I can put it right over that and, uh, and you know, and the insect would fall out. Or because I put the lid in here, I can actually screw this um, in and let the insect find its way in there. And, and we use that for the super special insects that we are scared will escape from us trying to dump them into the top, basically. So we have things that we are concerned about we generally well let them walk themselves in from the side right and one pro tip uh i will uh, sometimes use a falcon tube completely wrapped in um, gaffer's tape to darken it uh then when i screw it on of course the insect is going to want to that just encourages the insect to want to exit it uh, in, into the chamber because it's wanting to uh, go towards the light and then I also, sometimes, you know, you don't want the insect to go back in the tube. So I have just used uh, epoxy and uh, an extra lid of the falcon tube that allows me to just plug up uh, the port on the side. And then, you know, I'm just using a little nylon screw to be able to tighten uh, the lid there. So, uh, and normally, actually, I have it sitting this way out here, but normally... It would sit it this way. Again, it would be mounted on the uh, breadboard and I'd have the lasers mounted all on here so that it just secures things uh, better. This is the exact same thing, just a smaller version. Uh, and then this one is for really small stuff. This one is one of these um, kind of plastic display cases. I'm not sure what what it's called it's a bo it's a box a plastic box this is the lid if you can tell right here this is the bottom of it it's for like knickknacks and like to like uh yeah like little they... um trophies they're not really trophies but little uh little things you want to keep in boxes also you get them at craft stores yeah very cheap uh and what i've done is i have drilled a hole in it to um put a uh in this case i think it's 52 millimeter thread um on here uh, a, um, a UV filter, um, and then with the thread on, on this X on this side so that I can actually screw this onto directly onto the external <laughs> shutter. Um, and that way that, and that's necessary because of how close I need to focus on a tiny subject. And then I have a, a port, uh, again, just like we've talked about before, uh, a Falcon tube that can just screw in to the top there. Now, one thing I didn't mention, this one, this one, this one, and this one all have these uh, pieces of glass in the back that are at 45 degree angles. And the reason for that is it helps reduce reflections. If you have a solid piece of glass in the black in the back, you're going to um, more often than not get uh, hot spots from your flashes. It's very, very hard to, to, to not have that. So I like uh, having the 45 degree angle that will reduce the, the hot spots uh, on the glass. It also serves another purpose in that it kind of pushes the insect forward a little bit. Um, of course, the insects can also just go, you know, to the to the back corner as well. Um, and they like and, to and, do and that. In fairness, <laughs> and they, they can do that. The main reason though is, is to reduce uh, the reflections um, uh, on the glass. And I know folks are gonna ask for specific dimensions of all of these, though they don't really matter. I mean, the angled glass in the back matters and um, and just, I mean, build it whatever size works best for your focal species. And for us, this, you know, middle one here is what we use probably 90% of the time. So yeah, that size class, which is, uh, I don't know, maybe about five, six inches um, wide and maybe four inches tall or so. Um, that's, yeah, this, for us, this is by far the most common, but obviously we've shot things in all of these and it just depends upon, um, the size that you're, uh, you know, of insect that you're working with. 
Okay, so those are a few, maybe most of our uh, flight tunnels. So if you have any questions or comments or ways we can do things better, feel free to comment below. Thanks. Bye.